again everyone and welcome back to my channel <clears throat> I'm just trying different filming locations in the apartment right now I'm directly in front of this huge window in my living room I know that there's a glare on my glasses I tried to fix it I really can't do anything about it I just have to wear glasses so I'm sorry if you can't really see my eyeballs um, I promise that they're there I have eyeballs hello but I need these um, I just need them, okay? I need them to see. So anyways, as you can tell from the title of this video, I'm going to be talking about some Walmart stories because yes, I worked at Walmart for pretty much the past six months. Um, they didn't treat me super great, so I'm not there anymore, but that just means that I can share these stories with you guys and let me just tell you, I have some insane stories from working at Walmart for six months. like. Whew. So I'm just going to tell three of those in this video, but of course I will make other videos about these stories if you guys would like. I can also make a video about working at Walmart if you guys want to know how that general experience was. But without further ado, let's just jump right into the video. So story number one takes place just a few weeks after I started working there. I want to say maybe three or four weeks after I started working at this particular Walmart. Um this story happened and basically I was still in school when I started working at Walmart last semester so at first my shifts were mainly at night I had some pretty short night shifts and so I was pretty much there with the night cashiers when I first started for like the first month month and a half so it was a pretty average night. I think it was during the week. I don't think this was a weekend or anything. And it was me and about two or three other cashiers, which is generally typical for 9 or 10 o'clock at night. You have three or four cashiers just to maintain some organization in the store and get people out, in and out, and everything. So there's this lady and she has her daughter sitting in the basket portion of the buggy or shopping cart or whatever you call it. They have a little thing at the top where kids, little kids can sit in there. But this little girl was sitting in the basket, which like there's no problem with that. It doesn't really matter. She was having fun. She was happy. And so I, I watched them walk past the front cash register area, the front end. They walked past, they were headed back to beauty or whatever. So I don't really think anything of it. I greet them, I say, hi, you know, how are you? And so I go about my business and like 15, 10 or 15 minutes later, I see her walking back past the front end going somewhere else. So I hear the little girl say to her, I have to use the restroom. Or she says like, I have to go potty or whatever she said. So the woman turns to me and she asks me where our restrooms are. So I pointed her over to the restrooms, which were near the customer service desk, which makes it really easy to find and point it out to people. So she said, okay. So she starts walking. This little girl immediately starts peeing. Immediately. Like, no sooner had I pointed them toward the bathroom, this little girl starts peeing. And because she's sitting in the basket, the pee is just dripping onto the floor, just directly onto the floor. And nobody's realizing this for a few minutes. So I pointed out to my CSM, which is like customer service manager. They're in charge of making sure everything runs smoothly on the front end, pretty much. The CSM freaks out and calls maintenance. And maintenance is like in the back of the store at this point for some reason. I'm not really sure. There was something in automotive or whatever. So it was taking them a minute to get there. And so my CSM was trying to f like quickly grab the little caution cones and stuff like that and try to help block off the area. My coworker sees this man and his teenage son walking past and they just like walk on part of the pee that's on the floor. And so my coworker, being the blunt person that she is, points at the ground and says to the man, I hope you know that's piss. That is piss. This whole thing is piss. I fell out laughing. Oh my God. Okay, I understand that it's a disgusting situation, but 
you can't say that when you're at work. You can't. Like, I'm sorry. Even if, it, even if it's true, you can't say that. So I was just like, oh my God. Okay. Whew. So I was laughing so hard. The man just like gave her a very strange look. And I was just, I was just laughing. I was no use in the situation. After she said all of that, I was dead. And like, she didn't stop. She said it to the next person who walked by and she was like, be careful, this is P.S. And I was like, oh my God, girl. So, <laughs> so that's like the first story. That's like one of the first weird encounters that I had. Um, not really a bad experience, I guess. I mean, it was gross and it was weird. But <clears throat> Walmart is kind of inherently gross and weird, so I kind of expected that kind of thing. But yeah, I was just mostly got really tickled about my um, coworker being like, that's pissed. I hope you know that's pissed. You're walking through piss. And I was like, girl, oh my God. So this next story is one of many rude customer encounters that I had while working at Walmart. And I'll admit for like the first month or so, you're, you're getting your feet wet. You're trying to figure out how everything works. I was always like trying to hurry and do things correctly and help people and all of this stuff. But this story happens like three months into working at Walmart. So like I knew what I was doing. I wasn't making very many mistakes anymore. I was pretty much, I had the hang of it and I was, I was getting things done. You know, she was doing the thing out here. So this lady, and a couple of her friends come up and I, I say friends they might have been family members whatever and they had a couple of little children with them and the children were being terrible and we can't really say anything when kids are being awful you just kind of have to be like if they're really messing stuff up you kind of just have to say hey you know maybe don't mess with that you know blah 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 but we can't really do anything about it and that's fine so the lady was being pretty nice to me at first, I thought. Like, I didn't think that there was anything rude or mean about her. She had a WIC transaction, which, which if you don't know what that is, WIC stands for Women, Infants, and Children. And basically, if you're in that program, they will send you a check where you can present it at any retailer that accepts WIC transactions. And it has items on there, like basic food items that you will essentially be getting for free. Usually, it's something like cereal, eggs, bread, milk, stuff like that. You can't really get anything, like, fun with WIC. It's just essentials, which is, like, how it should be, you know? If you're getting that kind of thing, you're getting essentials, you know? So, she comes up, and she has one for, like, cereal and eggs and all of that kind of stuff. But she also has one for vegetables and fruit. And fruit and vegetables are handled separately in WIC transactions. Typically, the check has an amount that you cannot exceed. Like, it'll be generally $7 or $11, something like that, depending on the amount of children in your household, the people in your household, all of that kind of stuff. Like, if you're pregnant, if someone else in your household is pregnant, stuff like that. So, this particular check that she had was for seven, I think it was either seven or eight dollars of fresh fruit or vegetables. And so that was fine. She had, she had probably, she, she was probably maybe a dollar under her amount or 50 cents. It wasn't very much under the amount that the check was for. And apparently she wanted to get something else, which is fine. If someone has a week transaction and they see that they can have more and they just don't have it with them we will always let them go and pick out like a fruit or some bananas or something within the budget but she didn't say anything to me at all about it um if you're if you're unfamiliar with the week process this is hard to explain but once we're doing a week transaction there are a lot of steps in it we have to type in the amount, we have to scan the stuff, we have to type in um, the date, we have to do all of this stuff and write all this stuff on the check. And the recipient has to sign the check two separate times. First, they have to resign, the, sign it the first time when they get it, and the second time they sign it is after that they receive the goods. Like after you know what all you're getting, you sign this, and then we run it through the check printer and we put it in the drawer. Well, 
She didn't say anything to me, okay? I told her what the total was for the WIC transaction and that it was 50 cents or a dollar or however much under the amount. She didn't say anything to me. I did not hear her say a word because I, I, you learn to tune out people's conversations between one another if they're not talking super loud. Like I just, I don't eavesdrop on people really, especially not if I'm working, like I'm thinking of other things. I only hear people if they're talking loud or they're talking to me, you know? So I'm just doing my thing, I'm typing stuff in and I like hand her the check. I'm like, can you sign this for me? The second time, saying that you received all of your stuff and all of that, and she was like, yeah. So she signs it, I run it through the machine and I put it in the drawer and I hand her the receipt. And she says, what about my peaches? What do you mean, what about your peaches? You don't have any peaches. What are you talking about? She was like, well, um, I sent my son to go and get some more peaches so that you could add it to the total because it wasn't the full amount. And I was like, well, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you say that. Did you say that to me? Like, were you talking to me? Because I really didn't hear you. Like, there's really nothing I can do. You've already signed it. I did not know you didn't say anything to me. And she just goes off. She's like, I wasn't talking to you. I told my son, and isn't it part of your job to listen? Like, shouldn't you be listening? And I was like, ma'am, we're, we're not really obligated to listen to people's conversations amongst each other. You weren't talking loud enough for me to hear you. My hearing's not terrible. It's not the best, but I would have heard if someone was saying something to me, if they were talking, you know, pretty loud. I didn't hear her say a word about peaches at all. And even if I had, the peaches would have been over the amount and she would have had to pay extra out of pocket. I could have told her that. But she was going off at me, yada, 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 it's your job to listen, you're a terrible employee, da, 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 da. just give me my receipt. And then at the end of her whole little spiel, her whole little rant that she's directing at me because she didn't tell me she wanted a peach or peaches or whatever she wanted, she didn't tell me any of this. And so at the end of this whole thing, she says, um, and I warn you, if you don't, I, I don't, this is a family friendly channel, but this is verbatim what she said to me. You might want to skip ahead if you don't want to hear this um, because it is explicit. She says to me, you just need to listen some more. You need to learn how to do your job, you dumb white bitch. And I was like, What do you mean? I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't realize that my being white was affecting this whole situation. What? 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 What does that have to do with anything, ma'am? I don't understand. I don't ever treat people differently because of their skin color. I would never bring that up in an argument because it is frankly irrelevant. I was not saying really anything to her. I was apologizing, even though it wasn't my fault. That's what you have to do if you work in retail. You apologize for basically breathing because customers get mad about everything. So she was cussing at me, all of this stuff, and I was just like so done. Like I was honestly on the verge of tears at this point because I'm really bad at confrontation and people at Walmart will confront you all of the time. So she's going off at me. Mind you, I mean, I really don't know why she brought that up. I don't know why she felt the, like she could have just called me like a bitch and got it over with, but she felt the need to call me a dumb white bitch. So I really, I really don't know I guess it's because I was like one of two white cashiers, but like, what is the point of that? I really don't understand because I, I feel like that, it's just, I just, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know. I was trying to be nice to this woman. She was not trying to be nice to me and people at Walmart usually get really mad about nothing. 
Like, she got mad over this peach that she couldn't get because she didn't tell me about it. But she really wouldn't have been able to get it on that check unless she took off something else and replaced it for that. But I just feel like she was just trying to get mad at me for no real reason. Like, I understand that people have things going on in their lives that do not have anything to do with me, which is fine. But please, I beg you, if you go to Walmart and your cashier is not understanding or your cashier is confused or doesn't hear you or something like that, please do not scream. Do not scream at them. It's not going to help anything. It's not going to make you feel better. It's not going to make you get what you want. It is going to ruin the, uh, the cashier's day, pretty much, and potentially make them cry and potentially get you kicked out of the store because I later found out that that can happen. So, lesson learned, don't be mean to people. So, this last story that I have is actually kind of a funny one, again, that I want to end this video off on because, like, that middle story, it just sucked. It was, like, the worst. One of the worst encounters that I've had. So, anyway, this is kind of just a fun story that I really... I thought it was funny at the time. Like, I was kind of upset about it, but I thought it was funny. Anyway, so, of course, during the summer, a lot of people are buying watermelons. I think that this was around the 4th of July, I want to say. Yeah, it was probably like a couple days before the 4th of July. So, we were selling a lot of watermelons, a lot of, like, barbecue or ribs and barbecue sauce and all this kind of stuff, you know. All seasonal items that you would expect but specifically lots of watermelons so this lady and her like three or four kids I want to say come through and her mom so they're all coming through my line they have a buggy full of stuff which is awesome I love I loved checking people out who have just a buggy full of stuff it is so fun to me I don't know I loved just scanning stuff at Walmart I loved being a cashier at Walmart honestly it was really fun and if not for the way that the company treats the employees I would still be there so she comes through and I was ecstatic because I love buggies full of stuff I love helping people with a lot of stuff so anyway, I'm scanning all of her stuff. I'm making small talk with her. She's being super nice. She's like telling us or telling me about her 4th of July plans and all of this stuff. So I'm scanning everything, scanning everything. And I see that she has a watermelon. I didn't see it before because it was kind of under some stuff, but I saw it at the bottom of her cart. And there's like codes for vegetables and fruit and stuff like that. So that we just type it in. We don't have to scan anything. So I told her, you know, leave the watermelon in the in the buggy. I know the code for it. You don't have to take it out. It's great. And she was like, oh, okay, awesome. So I'm scanning through all of her stuff. And I finally get done with it. And I'm helping her put the bags in the buggy and everything. And apparently her mom hadn't really been paying attention because she picked up the watermelon. And she was, like, trying to give it over to me to scan it. And I was like, no, 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 no. You, you know, it's fine. I've already typed it in. It's okay. I know the code for it. I don't have to scan it. And so she's like, oh, okay. And so this little, one of the little girls was like, I want to hold the watermelon. I want to hold it. I want to hold the watermelon. And so the grandma was like, okay, okay, you can hold it for a second. Because, like, it wasn't, like, one of the really big ones. It was just, like, a medium-sized one. So she hands it to the little girl. And she goes, okay, don't drop it. Little girl immediately drops this freaking watermelon. I'm like, oh, my God. So this watermelon it's exploded all over the ground in front of my register and a CSM was nearby and she saw what happened and she was freaking out she called maintenance maintenance took forever to get there and I had watermelon all over everything and had to close my register for like 15 to 20 minutes <sighs> it was a mess they did get another watermelon though um, the little girl felt kind of bad about it the mom just started laughing really hard and honestly it was really funny because like two seconds before the grandma was like okay don't drop it and the little girl just alrighty thank you guys so so much for joining me again today leave me a like if you like this video comment down below tell me if you want to see more Walmart stories Walmart experience stuff like that kind of videos um and subscribe because I make new videos every Monday and Friday thank you guys once again so so much for joining me today and I'll see you guys next time bye